गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू शरद चंद्र एस अकाडमी डेली करंट अफेयर्स एनालिस ट्वेंटी थर्ड अप्रिल ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक्स फर्स्ट अबाउट इंटीग्रेटेड कमांड एंड कंट्रोल सेंटर्स इन द स्मार्ट सिटी मिशन सेकेंड इज अबाउट नॉइस पोल्यूशन थर्ड इज अबाउट एक्स्ट्राडिशन फोर्थ अबाउट महारानी जिंदा कौर फिफ्थ इज अबाउट वाक्शीर submarine okay let us start our first topic about integrated command and control centers so the in order to develop the urban areas in order to develop the cities in india the indian government has launched indian government has launched the smart C- city mission in 2015 okay the smart city mission has been launched in 2015 so in order to develop the innovative uh, initiatives and uh, better in order to make the cities better so the, by the house ministry of housing uh, and urban affairs so to in, to improve the economic growth as well as to improve the quality of the life of the people by the local development so here this particular context of the i triple c came uh, because with the statement of the government that is it out of 100 planned i triple c's have been created that means in the smart city mission the indian government has targeted that 100 cities have to be developed 100 cities have to be uh, developed as the smart cities so out of those 100 planned smart cities in it in it cities i triple c integrated command and control center we will see what is these integrated command and control centers are okay so so uh, so uh, remaining will be completed by august 15 that's what the expectation is uh, because as we are going to celebrate our 75th anniversary of our uh, independence so the government is targeting that by august 15 we are going to complete all the i triple c's right command and control centers now what is this command and control center it will uh, it will uh, give the authorities how to monitor the status of various infrastructures in the real time okay so here we it is completely a technology based center it is a technology based center which integrates uh, all the things like water energy supply sanitation traffic flow in the society how the building management planning of the city constructions in the city going on and how how it is the how the city is connected to internally as well as how the city is connected to the connected to the different other parts and uh, what about the internet infrastructure how for <coughs> the internet usage is there in city and uh, which areas of the city are do using more internet and which areas of the city are more developed so to reduce the inequalities as well in the cities as also this will help in promoting the cities that provide core infrastructure and give a decent quality of life to the citizens and also a clean and sustainable environment Uh, for the application of uh, smart programs okay that's why the regulation as well as monitoring by the government in these subjects will be made very easy by this i triple six okay once we have integrated that means a single command center will manage all these programs so that's the reason why we can say that it will be efficient so these centers will now track a number of additional parameters and will link it to the cctns so crime and criminal tracking networks as well so by using this the crime crime rate will also reduce that's what our expectation is so this is maintained this is maintained by ministry of home affairs do remember that this program smart city program is by ministry of housing and urban affairs but however uh, the i triple c works under ministry of housing and urban affairs whereas cctns works under ministry of home affairs so so what is the i triple c it is like a nerve center for all the operational management why because almost all aspects of a city are been connected to the i triple c right you will find each and every data regarding energy connectivity buildings traffic everything everything all the data regarding to the city is available at i triple c okay that's why it is easy to monitor whether it is traffic or whether it is water problems or energy problems whatever it is uh, if you have such data in a single place that's why it is true to say that 
the I three C will become the nerve center for the operational management of the city. Okay, so yeah, we are coming to these facts more important for the buildings. That is, Smart City Mission was launched in 2015. So the cities have almost uh, by this uh, by now it is almost six year, seven years have been completed uh, from the start. So the purpose is to the integrate all the operations within the city and improve the quality of life of the citizens. and make better use of the resources so ministry of housing and urban affairs will run such thing and it is a government sponsored scheme as i said so the uh, what is the strategy the strategy is th what are the strategy they follow and what are the four pillars of the strategy means improving the infrastructure improving the physical infrastructure as well as institutional infrastructure so means establishing for example i triple c is a part of institutional infrastructure okay if these i triple c okay how efficiently by using the technology we can do the governance by this command center so i triple c is part of the institutional infrastructure and at the same time a step by step development uh, like retrofitting redevelopment and also uh, making the city more green i mean green friendly environmental friendly development in the cities is also one of the target for the uh, this smart city program okay so and also to increase the economy of the city so these are all the targets so and the mission covers so mission targeted almost to to prepare 100 cities uh, in the duration of 5 years when started in 2015 okay but however the target has not yet achieved so we are um, it is planning by august 15 uh, more i triple cs have to be established and and all so out of total expected projects under the mission that is 5924 have been already tendered so work around these are the facts for the prelims right <coughs> now coming to the challenges what are the challenges to implement in this smart city program so yeah and one good thing about this i triple cs we have to concentrate is i triple cs were of great help during the time of corona yeah covid 19 pandemic during the time of pandemic covid 19 this i triple c set up under this mission uh, coordinated the traffic management surveillance grievance redressal utilities and not only that during the corona time means covid 19 pandemic time these i triple c's acted as a war rooms almost like a war rooms because they will have all the uh, information relating to the city so that's why they almost acted as a war rooms for implementing the initiatives such as cctv surveillance or uh, gis mapping or the tracking of health workers health care workers and uh, heat maps how the virus containment areas and uh, so real time tracking of ambulances so in many fields we are uh, providing medical services so in many areas this i triple c that is integrated command and control helped the helped as a war rooms during the time of covid so that was a very big advantage very big serve uh, serve which has been uh, solved by this particular ice processes the challenges are like energy efficient environment friendly structures or uh, still long way and for which huge amount of investment is needed so self sufficiency is not yet there for the dwellers of the city and public transit yes most of the city dwellers are not using the public transport not using the public transport they are still using the private so we have to convert from private transport to the public transport and at the same time by increasing the public transport facilities okay for example introducing the metro metro lines in different cities will okay will encourage the citizens to use the public transport okay so so to meet the demands of urbanization the city must improve its public transport facility and uh, to decrease the pollution as well in the country so as the amount of pollution is high in air by now well as traffic on the roads is high so that is the reason why the mission or the objective of this smart city mission is not being yet met okay the focus is on sustainable and inclusive development and to look at the areas okay right for the equitable distribution of the resources and equitable improvement and development of the cities this smart city mission will help and coming to the next topic about the noise pollution <coughs> okay if you see this uh, it is there was a statement given by the raj thakre in maharashtra saying that 
there is loud speakers in masks so as the masks are using loud speakers it become an issue so if you continue to do so he threatened to play anuman chalisa okay so anuman chalisa so if uh, before may 3rd if these loud speakers in the mass were not removed then he threatened to play the anuman chalisa through the loud speakers and create more disturbance or more noise pollution so maharashtra government may rely on the rules yeah the rules say clearly that there shall not be any noise pollution or uh, so the rules of 2000 1000 act is there prescribing the rules okay so then we will see so in the context of this we will see what is the noise pollution and according to the indian laws uh, how far this noise pollution can be tackled what are the punishments prescribed and all okay now the definition of noise is disagreeable sound okay according to the central pollution control disagreeable sound which is unwelcome which irritates and hurts the human ear right it is very simple definition whatever which is disagreeable sound whatever whatever which hurts or it is irritates the human ear uh, it is declared as a noise by the central pollution control board now the permissible levels depends upon the day and night so day is regarded as 6 am to uh, 10 am whereas night is regarded as the 10 pm to uh, 6 am so here the permissible levels of sound is little higher during day time whereas it is li- little lesser during the night time so the permissible limits depend upon the type of the area if it is industrial area quite more if it is a commercial area if it is domestic area residential area so depending upon the different areas the permissible levels varies so in business zone 65 decibels at uh, day time and 55 decibels at night okay whereas uh, in residential areas only 55 decibels in day 45 decibels at night uh, whereas in uh, industrial areas it is 75 decibels during day and 70 like that there are different uh, rules and regulations means decibels different slabs are provided for the maximum permissible levels of the sound whereas the noise pollution regulation and control 2007 Uh, is the collection of regulations governing all these regulation now it is also one more interesting fact is you may not believe that the noise is a air contaminant yes noise is a air contaminant as well according to the section 2 a of air air act okay pollution and control prevention air pollution act of 1981 says that noise is a air contaminant very very important point from prelims point of view because it is easy to confuse you to say that noise is air contaminant you because noise is not a air pollutant you may feel but yes noise is a air contaminant so air pollution in solid liquid gases so it it this defines the air pollution but in this definition itself you feel the uh, air contaminant that is noise is a air contaminant do remember this is very important so and environmental protection also says that noise pollution has to be regulated okay has to be regulated it is noise pollution is also regarded as the danger to the environment okay as a whole that's the reason why imposes the levels tolerable levels and limits on loud speakers construction equipments horns crackers etc okay so what are the rules and requirements for the loud speaker so what you have to see see yeah the punishment prescribed is a fine of 10000 rupees for the noise pollution using of loud speakers in public addresses so whatever according to the central pollution control board if you do the noise pollution then the fine is up to 10000 and when the loud speaker is for public address system that means meetings by the parties or meetings by some other groups or then the noise level must not exceed the 10 decibels above the area's ambient noise restrictions or 75 decibels whichever is lower okay so if suppose the permissible level in that particular area is only 50 50 decibels during the time of meeting it shall not exceed 60 or 75 whichever is lower so shall not exceed 60 so that's the rule clear rule uh, so how far the people are following this rule and how far the central pollution control board is imposing the fines so that is the question according to the guidelines loud speakers or public address may not may only be used with permission but we don't know how many groups are taking permission without before using the loud speakers and this is very important if there is any cultural festival religious festival okay then there is a exemption okay the exemption is given to such festivals or religious cultural festivals but that mat- that particular festival season must last only less than 15 years not more than 15 days sorry 15 years not more than 15 days okay 
so that is uh, that too some permitted limit will be given so what is the impact the impact is like harmful to the people health so hearing loss according to the who hearing loss and uh, noise induced sleep disturbance and sleep disturbance is noise induced it will be interrupting the sleep and it will cause weariness accidents lower performance of a person as a whole if you got disturbed in the sleep okay and this is what said by who right and physical disorders like uh, hearing loss headaches and rise in blood pressure so after after looking at all these we can clearly say that the noise pollution shall not be encouraged at any cost and in all the possible ways you must avoid the noise pollution so whether it is whether it is religious whether it is or political or whatever the meetings or whatever the assemblies whatever the uh, programs and assemblies uh, as far as possible the noise pollution must be reduced so right so without disturbing any secularistic features in india without disturbing the fundamental rights of the citizens uh, government must take complete care of decreasing the noise pollution okay because health right to health is also regarded as a fundamental right in india right okay next going to the third topic that is about extradition okay about the extradition if you see this is the topic of interrelation but before that what is extradition and all uh, we will see extradition what is extradition extradition is a process extradition is a process by which one state okay one state will one state will transfer a prisoner to the other state based upon the request of the second state extradition is a process by which one state upon the request of other state okay will give the person who commits who committed the crime in this state if suppose there are two states a and b if a person is committed committed crime in b if a person committed crime in b and escaped to a so the government in a will arrest that person and give back to b okay so that is known as extradition right it is nothing but delivery on the part of one state to the another of those whom it is desired to deal with for crimes of which they have been accused so extradable person includes those charged with crime but not yet trial was not yet done okay and uh, that's the reason why we have a, uh, so today we are in the context of supreme court's demand we are discussing this topic of extradition because this is topic about abu salim this abu salim was one of the accused in nine, one of the participant in 1993 mumbai serial blast attack okay this person was actually extradited from portuguese to india okay in 2002 the union so reminded the supreme court that union administration is bound to the commitment so while the portugal okay portuguese are extraditing this particular person to india okay abu salim to india it is said means it is agreed by india that we are not going to that is india will not sentence him with the capital punishment that is life okay so that was the basic agreement between portuguese government and indian government okay indian government agreed that abu salim will not be given the death punishment why because european countries whether it is portuguese spain or any other country european countries say that a criminal or a accused cannot be extradited to a country which has capital punishment okay death as a capital punishment right so that's uh, means it is the policy of europe because europe europe as a whole most most european countries banned the death sentence so that's the reason why they say that we cannot extradict we cannot extradit a person to a country which has death punishment so that's why they refused portuguese initially refused to extradit but however india gave the promise that abu salem will not be pro, uh, sentenced with uh, death punishment so now accordingly abu salem was 
given the and at the same time abu salem uh, punishment cannot exceed 25 years so that was the agreement made but however abu salem was given the uh, life sentence okay abu salem was given the life sentence for his role in the uh, blast now he challenged that he challenged that india according to the india and portugal agreement we you cannot give life sentence you cannot give more than 25 years of imprisonment but however supreme court uh, gov- government is saying that home ministry is saying that home secretary is saying that yes we did not forget our uh, whatever the promises we made to the portuguese we are bound by the commitment made to the portugal in 2002 we are acting accordingly only so that's what they said so if you see the background during the time of deputy prime ministership of lk adwani portuguese government was made some agreement so not exceeding so would not exceed the maximum sentence for abu salem shall not exceed the 25 years okay right so what is extradition so extradition is surrendered by one state to the another state it is intended to deal with the for crimes the so and so person is justified in that particular courts okay when will one be able to begin it so extradition request may may, uh, may be made by in case of whether it is the case is under investigation or whether the case is under trial and if that particular person is a convicted criminal for example in the recent cases even you may see about nirav modi nirav modi a diamond merchant has been extradited uh, so uk uk uh, means our united kingdom britain uh, agreed for the extradition of nirav modi to india who is a diamond merchant who has been uh, accused of the financial fraud right so so that is the one more example of this extradition so law enforcement agency is investigating the so and so case and prima facie evidence to support the claim in the foreign states court must be there so if these two cases these two conditions are satisfied then we can request for the extradition okay so yes we have a extradition act of 1962 which completely elaborately deals with the process of extradition so it standardizes all the procedures for the convicts from india as well as from uh, to other countries or from other countries to india then who is the central authority ministry of external affairs consular and passport visa cpv is the central authority to decide about the to deal about the extradition act then whoever the criminal may not be extradited to the requesting state in the following yes when this particular like one two conditions are satisfied then uh, criminal cannot be extradited if suppose there is no treaty in force between those those particular states about the immigrants or uh, about the extradited immigrants or nationals right so if there is no treaty in force between those countries then states are not obligated to extradite and it is limited to the crimes listed in the treaty only there has to be a treaty and crime must be listed in the treaty and at the same time military and political offenses in case of military and political offenses extradition may be forbidden okay so in case of military and political offenses extradition may be forbidden next terrorist activities and violent crimes are not included in the definition of political crimes okay for the purpose of extradition so if anyone uh, commits terrorist activities or if anyone if anyone commits violent crimes then that does not come under the military or political offenses next criminality in the sense if suppose a crime is a crime is been done by a person if that crime is not regarded as the crime in two countries then there is no extradition dual okay when the act that causes the offense is crime in both india and other countries if it may be crime in india but it may not be crime in some other country then there is no extradition right so if the procedural criteria is not met then also means procedural criteria procedure is mentioned in extradition act of 1962 if that particular procedure is also net not met and not followed properly then also extradition can be rejected so these are the grounds on which extradition can be rejected that means india cannot give a person to other states or other states can reject a person to give to india so these are the exception in case of extradition okay so we can reject the request of any other country for extraditing in this 
फाइव केसेस नेक्स्ट अबाउट दी महाराणी जिंदार कौर सो इट इज अ प्रिलिम स्पेसिफिक टॉपिक नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर मेन्स she is the engaged wife of maharaja ranjit singh you know that the maharaja ranjit singh is one of the great ruler of punjab region okay he almost uh, ruled the vast area of the punjab so at that point of time it is said that after britishers maharaja ranjit singh had a strongest army in asia so during the time of maharaja ranjit singh britishers were also carefully did not involved in the fight with maharaja ranjit singh instead both of them both of them acted as a deterrence to each other that's the reason why they were never involved in a conflict but after the death of maharaja ranjit singh britishers attacked the punjab okay so anglo punjab wars were been done which were led by the uh, so the I mean, successors of the maharaja ranjit singh so the maharani zindar kaur was uh, mother of maharaja dulip singh so he was the final king of the empire and uh, she how uh, the greatness of rani zindar kaur is she valiantly uh, she bravely fought against the britishers when the punjab was invaded right so and finally she was forced to surrender so the context why we are discussing about maharana Zin- maharani zindar kaur is uh, uh, in some historical proofs have been come out now so we about these maharani zindar kaur's involvement in the uh, invasion of the uh, british invasion and uh, fight against the britishers by the punjab people okay now about wakshir this is again very important topic of the pro- bigger project called as p1795 program okay so this p75 program is uh, launched some sorry so this is all about the scorpion submarines okay scorpion class submarines so already there are six six scorpion class submarines have planned by india worksheet is last one okay the last out of six so uh, un, under the p75 program so it is planned to develop these scorpions indigenously those are known as i uh, already five have been Uh, introduced now this is the four, fifth sixth one kalwari kanderi karanj vela wajir all these have been uh, induced into the navy now the new wagshir is being induced into the navy now scorpion class submarines are the part of project 75 uh, sub scorpion class uh, program now uh, these are those are like diesel electric propulsion system okay air independent propulsion system is used over there for effectiveness so the last one which is wakshir is named after a sand fish okay so a deep sea predator now the russian built wakshir indian navy first submarine was commissioned on 1974 so there was one more wakshir earlier but as of now this is not in operation it uh, retired in 97 so that's why we named the new scorpion class as wakshir okay so, so this what about this scorpion submarine how effective are there uh, how india is going to manufacture them indigenously initially this process project started uh, for almost 24 submarines out of which few are manufactured by the partnership with other countries and private and other few are manufactured completely indigenously so, so scorpions are uh, most sophisticated submarines they are uh, capable of undertaking the very underwater underwater missions okay capable of dealing with underwater missions and uh, anti submarine surface missions anti ship warfare so whatever the the maritime warfare it will be very useful and uh, these are very modern conventional submarine series okay so for example uh, here we targeted six scorpion and all the six scorpion attack submarines were delivered to the navy okay with the support of the defense production department of defense production under the ministry of defense okay and one more important thing is the these whatever the scorpion classes were developed in mazagon mazagon dock limited okay mazagon dock limited okay so this mazagon dock limited 
he is manufacturing these six carbon submarines with technology assisted by the uh, some france we are taking the assistance of technology only from france we are not importing scorpions from france we are just taking the assistance from the france okay as a deal of 3.75 billion us dollars it was signed way back in 2005 right okay so this is all about uh, workshire and this is all about today's current affairs thank you see you again tomorrow